Hello and welcome to Amanda's Wellbeing Podcast, a podcast where we discuss all things relating to your well-being, including interviews with experts in the fields of nutrition, physical and mental health, and my 5-Minute Food Facts series. I'm Amanda Hayes, your host, a nutritionist with a passion for well-being. This is my first podcast for 2020, and of course I would like to wish you all a happy new year. However, for us in Australia, the start of this decade has been significantly marred by the horrific bushfires burning across our beautiful country. The devastation to property, wildlife, livestock and businesses has been unprecedented and tragically, more than 20 lives have been lost. Here in South Australia, as I record, Kangaroo Island is burning out of control and we are heartbroken. It is such a beautiful place. Australia's response has been phenomenal with donations flowing in and I think it reflects how much we all love our country. It is raining here today in South Australia so fingers crossed that that helps somewhat. Anyway on to today's show. Before I introduce today's guests I will take a moment to let you know that you can subscribe to my podcast on YouTube, hit the red subscribe button or on your favourite podcast app including iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, Spotify or Google Podcasts. I'll also mention that although I will often be speaking with experts, any information or advice provided in Amanda's Wellbeing Podcast is not intended to be used to treat, cure or prevent injuries or medical conditions. And it is not a substitute for advice from your own health professionals. Today I am here with Melissa Anderson. Melissa may be young, but she has led a full and fascinating life, starting out as a dancer and then moving into things like CrossFit and Pilates. And she now owns her own very beautiful Pilates studio called Corpomotus. In addition to a life focused on movement, Mel has some other very interesting talents and I'm really excited to talk to her today. So let's get started. Hi Mel, welcome to Amanda's Wellbeing Podcast. Hello. (laughs) First podcast. (laughs) Well, it's great to have you here. So I'd like to talk about everything that you do and we'll start by dance. So you started dancing, I believe, at the age of three. Yes. And you must have loved it because you continued all the way through to doing your Bachelor of Dance performance. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Yes. So what drew you to dance? Um, mum's a tap teacher. Ah, okay. Yeah, so definitely at the age of three, I didn't put my hand up and ask for it. I wouldn't have known what it was. Um, mum was a tap teacher and my auntie was my ballet teacher. So there was an influence. Yeah, (laughs) yep. Um, not the feet though. I didn't get any of that side of things. Um, so the influence was there already. So went in because of that. And then I guess I just didn't, that was it. It just didn't even think about it and it stayed all the way through. And because of the way that it works, you'll, you'll sit exams each year and you don't question it. You just start it again yeah. next year because that's what you're going to do the well, next year and you go up and, I yeah. guess you would question it if you didn't enjoy it, I Agreed. suppose. Agreed, yes. But... And there were some times that that happened and yeah. mum turned around and said, oh, I've paid till the end of the year. You don't have a choice. Yeah. Now, she told me after all of this, <laughs> she never paid because of my auntie. <laughs> so, but obviously she, you know, when you're young and you think yeah. you know everything and so – Always at the end of the year, we had the concert and you forget about anything you didn't like during the year. The concert time was the best time. And so you left on that note to start again the next year. And then, you know, I maybe had every second year or third year, you know, there was only a couple of times. It was mainly teenager brain sort of time. Um, And I think when you start losing competitions, when you used to win them and Mm -hmm. it was all those little things. And, but I'm glad she, um, yeah, said that she <laughs> paid when she didn't. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that created that sense of obligation. Then, yeah, absolutely, it? yep. And it sounds like any sort of competition. So from my point of view, if I do a triathlon, like all the training and halfway, you know, when I'm running, I think, why am I doing this? But then when you finish it, you're like, oh, that's the best thing oh, I'm, I've ever done. Yeah. When can I do the next yeah, one? Absolutely. Mm. Luckily, though, dances for us were only three minutes long and not three <laughs> hours long. <laughs> so we had, but it's, it is, it's the training and everything else. And you got, and, and to be honest, the discipline from it all. Yeah. I'm so glad that there were positions that, you know, we held for minutes where we were shaking wow. and, you know, and, 
you know, do it again, do it again. But it was delivered in a way that we were expected to do the best we could do, not to be some sort of crazy. Yeah. So that has definitely, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful of it now. At the yes. time, I was like, I've had enough, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so and what styles of dance did you do? So I started with tap and ballet. Um, I think my tap shoes were like, I don't even know what I could do at three, by the way. <laughs> That's so cute. Um, I think it was just like a you know loud shuffle. So yeah, tap and ballet. And then eventually, um, a little bit older, I started jazz and then didn't do hip hop and stuff. I too a lot was a lot later. And I guess my age, hip hop wasn't in when right. I, yeah. So, and then the next after that would have been like contemporary or modern. So mm-hmm. once again, it was just, and, and it was Canberra too. So because of that, we didn't have the influence of maybe America and uh, as what Sydney or Melbourne would yeah, have in the same place. way, smaller yeah. place. So, and um, my auntie's dance school was predominantly ballet anyway. So we had that as a, as a base. So yes, yeah, yeah. so as I got older, I added all the styles and yeah, couldn't decide. Do you decide. have a favourite? Or- oh, I don't have the body for it, but if I could have done ballet and had that as my career there was it's the discipline it's the scheduling yeah. it's the rig i don't know what it is because it's so it, athletic isn't it it I sounds love- like something you'd hate because there's all these rules but there's mm. not at the same time and um i just think the performance you work that hard and the artistic you know all of yeah, that and yeah it's a combination of so many things isn't it it's, huge it's the athletic ability the gracefulness the yes. acting yep. The, yep yeah the drama yeah, I love watching ballet. And then equally on the other hand, though, tap, because there was this rawness about it. You, There was no rules. So yeah. there was the rhythm and the – but I just – I didn't have I, – I was a master of all tra- – no, what is it? Jack of all trades, master, master of, of none. none. Oh, so, I don't know if I believe yeah, yeah. you, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I didn't pursue a career, but um, – so, yeah, I, and it was, it's actually interesting because so, Stephen McRae, who – he's actually in t- Cats – He's kept up his tapping just as much as what he has. And he's a principal in the Royal Ballet. Oh, wow. And so his tapping is like, I say equally as strong. I'm not in the tap industry. There's lots of, it's a big genre of all different styles. But he's been able to keep it up on the side. So he can, like his tapping quality is oh, on par amazing. with. Yeah. So you can do it. They're two yeah. completely opposing styles, but at the same time. I guess if uh, you've got yeah. that, that fitness, that rhythm, that love for it. Yeah. You can oh, exactly. pursue yep. it. And I know that you had to stop um, your dancing career due to an injury. So can you tell us a bit about that, you know, how that came about? And I think I'm using that a little bit too <laughs> as a potential choice to leave the industry. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so in second year, so I had left Canberra, got into the dance course at, in Adelaide and it got to second year and obviously like now I know why but Mm. at the time your body can only take so much so you push through the choreography and you don't realize the volume and repetition because you have slowly built up on that over the last x amount of years and here you are doing that kind of intensity in you know three years and yeah from what I understand at the time, I'm, you know, even now it sort of shifts and changes of what it possibly could be. But my SIJ in my pelvis. What's an SIJ? So where your tailbone is. Yeah. And your pelvis. Oh, it's not either a, side. Yeah, mm-hmm. either side. So it's not a joint like your shoulder joint right. is. It's where it meets. Okay. And something happened there. So it, it didn't split or anything, but how it felt, I thought I did my lower back. I thought I did oh. a disc. So I was in a lunge. It was nothing major. I didn't get, you know, I didn't fall down the stairs. I didn't, I just stood up out of the lunge. And when I got to the top, I just couldn't, I couldn't bear weight. I, yeah, it was. Oh, and then awful. I thought I was paralyzed. I was like, oh my God. And then I thought, no, hold on. I'm standing. I haven't, like, I haven't fallen over, but I couldn't, I couldn't walk. I had oh, no idea awful. what it was. At 19, you're going, that's it. I'm done. I can't function. That all settled down, thankfully. And, but it definitely was the base to a lot of issues that I had after that. But it was just because we weren't for the amount of stuff we were doing for my body. Mm-hmm. I mean, everyone got injuries here and there. Yeah, sure. I was doing no accessory work. If I had at least been doing something, something at the gym or Pilates or having an understanding, I could have balanced. I maybe still would have had something, but not to yeah. the severity that Do it did. Do you think that these days people pursuing a career in dance would be doing all those collateral you know pilates and i think it depends or... on who they meet right so um we're talking still 
which I have empathy for. Um, the old school teachers who came, who come from, which is not a bad thing, come from what they know. Yeah. Which is you sort of maybe dance through it, or um, you know, you do some classical sort of ballet accessory exercises. But I don't think we look at the squats and the deadlifts and that kind of, you know, because it's yeah. like, oh, you'll put on too much muscle or, you know, and, and we need that just as much as yeah. we need all that refined accessory work. It's it's a bit of a paradox, <sighs> yeah. isn't it? Because um, ballet dancers have to be so strong. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, as you say, they don't, they can't be bulky. Yeah. 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 And well, it's a, well, yeah. And, and that also comes down to bit, like, I mean, I'm talking a little bit out of my scope here, but from you know, when we're talking genetics and everything else, you could probably get a tiny ballet dancer to build muscle. Yeah. Um, but they they are genetically of a, you know, predisposition anyway, um, as I am, you know, and everything else. Yeah. But they probably wouldn't be able to bulk up, to be honest. Yeah. Like you'd have yeah. to be doing crazy amounts of lifting and Steroids dieting. And so, yeah, well, exactly, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and even then... I'd be interested to see how long they could hold it on for, you mm. know, and anyway. But so, I, yeah, I think we're becoming like you look at the Aussie ballet. I mean, they have done for a long time just pulling them out of a out of a hat. The amount of science that they're drawing in because, yeah. you know, they used to do static stretching where you just sit and hold. They don't do that or they – I don't know if some of the dancers still do, but I read an article that they were talking about and they don't encourage it at all. Yeah, same with running. That's yeah. not encouraged yep. either. It, it, yep. it actually can lead to injury. Yes, that, mm. and it's the same thing. Same so with dancing, yeah. they use an example of a calf stretch. Instead of just sitting and letting the heel, like if you stood on the edge of a, of a stair, instead of just letting it drop and hold, they actually encourage like a calf rise. So yeah. you still go there, but the muscles, it's like the muscles but are you're firing. Warming them up. Exactly. And, yep. Yeah. And, and that's where they're saying that's actually where they get the length and the flexibility from. And so that's even then I'm looking at that going, oh my gosh if I had had some you know yeah, yeah you well, never know I, you never know do you we experts in uh, hindsight aren't we Is yes that the... <laughs> indeed so your decision then to not pursue dance as a career was that hard for you or? um yeah it was a little bit I think and it was mixed part of injury in the sense that I looked at it and went okay am I going to put up with this for the rest of my life um as in the injury and the mentality around that and then at the same time too, in second year, we had units where one of the instructors or the teachers brought in people from the industry and we had conversations about mm-hmm. what actually happens when you finish. Now, a little naive ballet bun me went, okay, once I finish the dance course, I walk into a company, right? Because the person who is the oldest leaves the company. Yeah. How could it be any other way? Um, and then in second year, all of this was starting to dawn on me through these little conversations. And one of the people that came in just said, don't do it. Oh, don't that's pursue interesting. it. That was very honest. Only one. Mm. And that was the only one that stuck with me. Cause I think I was actually up wanting to see a little bit more. Um, I felt like everyone was selling it to me, trying to be polite. Right. And she just went, it, it's crap. Well, it's a hard road, it is, I yeah, imagine. Yeah, and she wasn't – it sounded negative, but really at the end of the day she was actually just being, like, brutally honest. A, a realist, yeah. Yep, and that's when I went, okay, do I actually want to apply for grants? Which, for me, I go, that's not my money that I've earned. That's someone else's mm. donated money, which I would, I think I would forever struggle with. And that's not to put anyone else down. It's just my personality. Yeah, I just, just – that's not my thing. Yeah, just how you feel about it. I didn't feel like I was – like an amazing choreographer you know and then I guess I just sort of sat and analyzed a little bit yeah Yeah. so I don't know maybe I would have been someone that wasn't a choreographer but was just a dancer so you know you tell me what to do that's all good and then I'll work within that um and then I looked at job opportunities and went oh my gosh like I where what am I going to do what am I going to do I still have to maintain all of my dance classes can I do hospitality and all of that on yeah, top? So, stressful, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. And you know what? If I was that hu- was that hungry for it, you just do it. And exactly. A lot of the girls and guys did, um, but I think I had already accepted by third year that I'm just going to do what I can balance and then just let it wean off. But I miss performing. Yeah. That was the thing that I, yep, even to today. Oh, really? It's like yeah. if you can put, and it's not because I want you to look at me. No, but you just love that just feeling. Just love that rush, feeling. The, yep, yep. Yeah. Hopping on stage. And once again, it comes back to all that hard work. Yep. 
and you just the pinnacle of the it. pinnacle of it. And you just let it all out and the adrenaline rush. And when I identified that, that's when I re um, I did a couple of things with Ding Productions, which do they do all the cricket, the dances, and oh, things cool. like that. Mm. And so there were some opportunities where for the big bash on New Year's Eve, um, I got to have. The, an electric like I had played air oh, guitar fun. and I had pyrotechnics coming out the end and I got to stand on the old scoreboard yeah. so like how often do people get yeah. to go into the Amazing. old scoreboard and so there's some things like that where I go awesome but the only way I can probably a crappy analogy you know in love actually mm. everyone knows that movie where the guy finally goes to the girl and he does the cards oh yes, yes. and he goes okay I'm done now I kind of went through that a little bit. It's just like, I'm just going to do my thing and I'm going to, when I can, just pick stuff up. Yep. But then I'm at peace with it being there. And maybe it's because a little bit too, I've started to sink my teeth into what I wanted to do. Yeah. So um, yeah. is that where Pilates comes in? Absolutely. To your life? Yep. So how, how did you find out about it, get involved, become a teacher? So tell us about your Pilates journey. So 16 years old is where it started. Right. And you were still dancing. Still dancing. And mum thought it would be good for me, um, which is fine. That was, you know, when did all that. And then I had, I actually didn't know what it was. I think I'd heard about it. I think she went and did all the research. A couple of the girls at dancing in my year were doing it too. So for me, it was social. Great. You went in. I had no idea what I was doing. I thought it was not boring, but I didn't care if I didn't go. Um, and it's not that the teacher was bad or anything. I just think at 16, oh, I don't yeah. know, like. And and at <laughs> that age too, you kind of feel a bit invincible, don't you? Oh, like physically. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so you wouldn't, you know, but what I didn't realize is what even just once a week, what it was doing for my body. So I wasn't a very good jumper um, at, from a timing perspective. And it wasn't until I was getting the feedback from, say, my auntie or other teachers, they're like, you can you can jump now. I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? You know, so I didn't notice that. And then I left it a little, yeah. So all that coordination stuff, as subtle as what it was, as once a week as what it was, was actually making a change. Mm. Anyway, left that for a little bit, started the dance course here. We had Sarah Lovett or course now was our instructor. We also had her only once a week. She's classical Pilates trained, went to New York, learnt off the disciple of Joseph Pilates. Mm -hmm also ex-dancer so had a lot of that um and you know so had her influence kept that a little bit but i we didn't get it in third year from memory we only got it first year and i think half of second year that's my memory going back so then i left it again and then because of the sij stuff and whatnot when i finished and i could actually go to her classes i started then seeing her once a week and that was really consistently that was mac classes um then I didn't realize you could study it and I went and did all these other things. So went and did um, my diploma of makeup, oh, worked yes. in retail. I know, like, I what do want to ask yeah. you about that, but yeah. we'll keep going with Pilates. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, did all of that. And I think what I guess where I started to settle into the teaching side of things is when I was working at Celsius, there was a makeup course there. I really enjoyed teaching the course of it I love sitting there and having these seeing these like light bulb moments with everyone um and I guess like you could have I could have spent hours with someone just to be able to understand it or get it or you know and I think it was then did I actually go "Uh aha so teaching I think is what I'm enjoying I need to figure out what I want to teach yeah and then I think I I was sort of got into that I haven't stuck with things for a long time I don't know why. And I guess I got to that cusp again of, right, I'm hungry. What am I going to do? Saw, just searched Pilates courses. Mm -hmm. Didn't realize it could actually be a course. I thought it had to be like an apprenticeship, um, which I think it may have been way back when it used to be similar to dance teaching. Like you, 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 you're a student from that young all the way through. You then just progress into a teacher, I guess, or whatever. Um, Yeah. And then... I saw the course and went, you know what? I'm going to do this. Loved it. First day just went, this is, this is it. Yep. Wow. So in, in, a, in essence, you haven't really looked back, have you? No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And when did you set up your, so you have your own studio. Yes. It's called Corpomotus <laughs> and 
Can, first of all, what does that word mean? So technically, because of the umlaut on the O, it's Which kerpa. Is the two little the two dots. Little dots. Oh, okay, um, kerpa. Mantis. Kerpa. Now I'm sorry to all the German uh, <laughs> people out there if I've said that wrong. So kerpa is body in German. Mm-hmm. And motus is movement in Latin. But because the O is an O and we're in Australia, if I said kerpa and then spelt out the website or the email, it was just going to be too hard. So I've just yeah. called it corpor modus. Um, it was actually my other half Dan's idea. So I was going to call it the body studio. And he just said, no, that's not that's not you. That's like that's a cop out because well, he said it sounds bland for you. You know, yeah, I, I it's don't know. Probably a bit generic sounding Possibly. maybe. I don't know. And, and I also wasn't sold on it. It was just something that was sort of sitting and floating in a, the background. A, a better option hadn't yep. come up. Yeah. And he said, why don't you, because I've got a German background um, through my mum's side. And he said, well, why don't you look at maybe what it is, you know, in German or yeah. go down that path. And I sort of thought, okay. So as unromantic as what it was, I jumped onto Google Translate. <laughs> <laughs> Because I have no German that I know, um, even though I've got that on my side. And yeah, I just started workshopping words that I had constantly in my head, like movement, body. Um, I didn't want, I almost didn't want the word Pilates in it. I didn't want fitness in it Mm. because I think, I know because that's what I do. I just felt like it put me into that category and I wanted it to be a bit more than that. Yeah. The thing I like about the word, I'm just going to say corpomotus, yeah. is that even though it's not a sort of English word per se, you do know what it means. Like yeah. It's obvious enough. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Which is good because if it was too obscure, people would think, well, what's that? Right. And, yep. and yep. I think it is corpor sounds like body motus movement. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Or something exactly. And, I've, and, and funnily enough, a lot of people, because they weren't sure what it was, has added a bit oh, of intrigue which interesting. is the opposite which I, I think in mark I don't know I don't know anything about marketing but I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because you're not making it obvious which can yeah, push I, people away I don't know yeah, either don't. No. bring me back the yellow pages like that's as good you know <laughs> yeah. so yeah and then I guess the reason where the Latin component came in um first of all a lot, some of the German words just didn't have for me just from a I guess a business point of view didn't have that I don't know, rolling, I don't know. I Mm. I wasn't sold on it. And then when I looked at the Latin side, to me, Latin, well, I guess it is not just to me, but it's in a lot of languages. Yes. And that's where the the Latin component comes in. So motus, movement, movement's everywhere. So Latin, it's not everywhere, but it's in a lot of languages. So I guess there's that harmony in terms of the why. I don't have an association with Latin per se, like I do with, say, the German side, Um, but, but we all do in a sense because yeah. so much of our language, as you say, right, comes, right, yeah, um, especially scientific language as well, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. And so you opened your business. When did you do that? Thirteenth of March, not last year, the year before. So what's that? Oh 20... yes. I... No. We've... We've just changed Where years. Are it's we? all very confusing. So, <laughs> no, 2018. 2018. Yes, because 2020 will be two, yeah, it'll be two years two this years. year. Oh, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. And <laughs> was it easy to find a space or did that take a while? Um, it took, well, it wasn't, it wasn't. So I know where I, I knew where I wanted to be mm-hmm. and I wanted to be in a hub near, okay, this is going to sound selfish. I wanted to be near coffee. No, not selfish. Yep. Very rational. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not a big coffee drinker, but my one every morning is my thing. Yeah. And so I thought if I wanted to be near coffee, so did other clients. Because, there's, you do. know, if you can just hop out of your class, go and grab a coffee, jump in the car and go or be near Coles and Woolies or, you know, wherever mm. it is. So, yeah. So then when I sort of settled on Unley Road ish, sort of looking at areas. Yeah. I came across where I am now and it's a huge space mum and dad were visiting at the time I brought them in and they just looked at me like what are you doing you know <laughs> how and I just straight away when I walked in I was already seeing yeah. which sound like a lunatic I was already seeing clients walking through music I I don't know and I've never been that um spiritual is not the word I'm looking for I don't know visually yeah but I think <laughs> there's a lot to be said for that instinct yeah and you clearly had that sort of gut reaction to it that yeah and I didn't get it from any place. other yeah any other spots and yeah. I don't know and I think admittedly to the you know the just things like timber paneling the brass handles on the stairs though that kind of old it was warm and yeah. every almost everyone that has shared that feedback when they come in it feels like it doesn't feel sterile so yeah. it obviously is translated beyond me and they get it when they yeah. come in um and 
this is going to sound ridiculous too. There's a clock in there that is the exact same clock, exact same colors, exact same numbers and brand that I grew up with in Canberra. Oh, wow. And that actually, like, that sealed it. Yeah. Which, I love things like that. Like, little can you believe I've decided, I know, I decided on having my studio there because of a clock. It obviously, I ran the numbers and <laughs> it could have been, you know, like with anything, it could have been a lot cheaper. I could have gone into a much smaller space. There was something about that space where I just went, like it's got to be. Yeah. And I just hope everything aligns. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems to be going well so far. Yeah. So that's brilliant. What about finding staff? How did you find the right people? I have been so lucky. Let me touch all the wood in the world. Um, a little bit from the people that I studied with. Mm-hmm. So that's helped. I think some of the dancers that I know that had become Pilates instructors. So just from the immediate networking and incidental networking through study or whatever it may be. Um, Adelaide's pretty small too. So I guess you just get to know people along the way. So when I first opened, that was the biggest stress. Everything else I was like, I can control, which is just typical of my personality. Um, But that I couldn't. And I just sort of went, I'm just going to have to just deal with it. Yeah. Um, and trust. just through, yeah, just mm. trust and through people and, and that I studied with and even someone who, so, um, Mike, who came to CrossFit, his partner, Tam ended up working, you know, so just through little meetings, like yeah. he just happened to walk into CrossFit one day. So, so, so it's been an organic process. Organic process. And I just, that once again goes, you know, every time something's gone a bit, uh, something's fallen into place. So that's just happened over time. So yeah, but I've lost staff too. They've gone off and finished their physio degree and then worked yeah. in a physio or um, a couple of my you know staff members are PTs and they've got their business. And so for me, that was an extra add-on. And so they've just paired back. So it's, we call it hiatus. I don't think anyone's really like, well, I'd like to think, maybe they haven't been honest with me, but it hasn't been a leaving because they've hated it they've left no, it because they had to for so other reasons yeah or they've had to move or whatever it might be so yeah i have been very lucky um and i have and a, this is not to say anything against young people but a lot they're a little bit older they've gone and done all these other things some of them had home studios so uh, yeah. yeah it's what they want to do anyway yeah and i yeah. think the life experience um of someone who's done a few things it means they can relate to people really well huge yeah absolutely you know and and even like I haven't had kids so there will be something that I can't impart either yeah but I've got other instructors that have so I I feel like together all of our brains and what we've done you know we bounce back and knowledge Mm. yeah I've got a physio I've got um exercise physiologist so the back and the foot yeah I don't know it's just it I've I, it's not work. Yeah, it's it a collaboration. Like you've put this jigsaw together and all the pieces have fallen into place. Yeah, and some, like but that. somehow the pieces have just come out of nowhere. Yeah. Right? I haven't even like, <laughs> the you magic know, jigsaw. Yeah, yeah. And I hope the magic jigsaw never leaves me. Because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, on your website, you talk about the body being strong, healthy, reliable and intelligent. And I love that. And then you go on and say, uh, well, you talk about the development of intrinsic musculature, global musculature and cardiovascular endurance. So... Can you tell me what does intrinsic and global musculature, what do those terms so mean? So mum begged me to change that, right? And I said, <laughs> I'm not going to because I think I should call it for what it is. So essentially, um, I may have actually changed the website a little bit now. I'm just trying to remember. But um, the so intrinsic is all your deep muscles, mm-hmm. basically. And now I'm not a physio, so this is my understanding yeah. on in, in Pilates land. Global muscles, essentially your, your, your surface muscles. Your so the ones muscles. you can see. The ones you can see. So mm. ripped six pack is yeah. going to be, you know. Um, now, if you take, and this is, we've seen this, if you take a ripped six pack dude, I'm just picking gener- generics, and you pick a... I don't know, let's say me, not a six pack or even a mum that's had kids. So let's just mentally go right, maybe uncon not I shouldn't say unconditioned, that's nothing against the mums out there, but you know, visually you go, Oh, that person must be really strong, mm, right? The six pack dude. The six pack dude. You get them to do core work, that six pack dude doesn't necessarily have the capacity yeah. to stabilize. They can't always do a roll up. You actually because their muscles have been trained in a way you get, say, the mum that's, I don't know, four-year-old kid, let's just take that for example, she could have essentially more yeah, cord, just by the way. can't see them. Can't see them. Mm. And I think, I mean, I think we know a lot more about all of this now 
than what we used to, but it's um, we forget about the little muscles. Yeah, I think also, as we said, because you can't see them, but now that we have ultrasounds and things like that, you yeah. actually can have a look. Can't yeah, you? And we get an idea about mm. it. And I think too, for anyone that's gone through injuries or anything that sort of stopped them in their tracks where they've had to pair a lot of their big power stuff or, you know, even running or whatever mm. to accessory work and things like breathing and being a little bit fussier, then they've got the respect for that. Oh, absolutely. Um, not saying people that don't in general anyway, but I think we go, oh my gosh, we need this. And so yeah. for me, I see it as can we work inside out a little bit both physically and mentally? Let's go, yeah, okay, that's the goal. Let's try not to do the goal right now. Let's yeah, try and take our time um, and accept some times that we can't, not can't, I shouldn't, say that strictly but can we do better movement that isn't as exciting at the time knowing that that's gone we just have to trust the process I guess because you can't see it or maybe you might not feel it yeah I think once you've had children though you you're so aware of that because for a lot of women the muscles in their stomach separate yeah because they you know they have to to make room for the growing baby and then they don't go back again yeah that's quite a common thing and There's a gap there. I was actually just having a discussion with a new client this morning. We, I would love, and I know this is a bigger world than me, but I would love if we could have Pilates-esque exercise so drilled into us that it's just as drilled in as what all the other things are, you know, no yeah. alcohol or no this. It's like let's and and after yeah. And within the medical world too. Pelvic so floor exercises totally, and all that. Yeah, totally. I mean, when you are pregnant, you do hear about pelvic floor yep. exercises yep. these days, but that's about it. Yeah. yeah. Or it's like, hey, do this. And you go, yeah. okay, well, you know, the, the no- and it's not that the person has to have all the knowledge at the time, the doctor, the obstetrician, the whichever. It's go to here. Like mm. this is essential that you do this as your fourth trimester basically, you know, so make sure that you're doing that that work and even if you don't commit we have lives we know we can't you know do it perfectly all the time but the awareness and the knowledge that if we do get stuck we can go back or we can go search for that um instead of getting to 40 50 whatever and having that prolapse and thinking that's normal Mm. but you know anyway experts in hindsight (laughs) exactly um and you also as i mentioned said that pilates can help cardiovascular endurance so how is that so that is through my personal experience now i'm sure there's probably a study somewhere um of something similar but it's the breathing that's the massive part yeah now look there'll be other things you know um the actual conditioning itself the awareness that you know if you um if you're training or you're going for a run, maybe the Pilates has made you go, oh, my foot and my knee alignment. Yeah. Now I'm more efficient. Now, you know, the cardio is not, you know. But for me, the breathing. So the oh, capacity really to yeah, to bring the movement back to non-cardio work, it's still going to be challenging because you're still loading through core, mm. but actually being able to breathe through that sticky moment, if I can just put it into a terminology, mm. and then going and doing all the CrossFit stuff, and actually doing a burpee and actually breathing, you know, not just <laughs> surface inhaling or, mm. and a lot of runners have said the same thing. Um, it takes time. Like I reckon it took me two years before I went, oh, I can actually like now think about the breath in the, you know, yeah. But yeah, um, yeah that's my, I know, because that statement's quite outrageous, right? It's like, well, I just are you selling it, thought, it to oh, me? <laughs> is, that, is that because your core muscles get stronger? I mean, that's probably part of it Totally, too. yeah, absolutely. But yeah. that breathing wasn't the answer I expected. Yeah. So yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. Um, in fact, my personal trainer, when he when I do my weight sessions with him, he, he makes me breathe because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. Forget, no, and, yeah. and that's the thing. It's like, and it's not so much that your face is turning blue, but... It's that now there is such thing as brace breath. If you're going to do your one RM deadlift in a competition, there will be breathing or not breathing that will be specific to that. Right. That's that's out my scope of practice. Yeah. I'm not a um, just for the average punter. Yeah, exactly. Though. Yeah, and that's the thing. And so your core needs to work with your breathing. Mm. The di- you know anatomically, we've got to be so if we're holding our breath, what's happening? Yeah, so, we're not getting oxygen, are yeah, we, to the muscles? Yeah, or... what's happening to pelvic floor? What's mm. happening to core, you know? And so, yes, 
holding breath stiffens things, but then you're asking us to move. So, you know, holding a plank, you're going to be there for, well, we'd like to be there for five minutes. We're not, (laughs) but what are you going to do? Hold your breath for five minutes. So, you know, impossible. Yeah, Mm. exactly. So, Mm. and it's not just Pilates that encourages that really anyone that has any movement background or, or yoga, yoga as well and that's great what, for that yeah mm. and Joseph Pilates drew from yoga too there's some things that are similar I wouldn't say it's strictly the same but the breathing is just yeah. in yoga is it, it is yeah. yeah so um and what about your motus classes so what are they okay so non-romantic moment again. Um, I had to give the web designers a name for that class because they had to do the website. Ah. And I didn't want to call it Pilates Fusion because I just – I and then I couldn't call it – not that I would have, but I couldn't call it CrossFit because it's a registered trademark. Yeah. Uh, didn't want to call it Functional Fitness because it wasn't just that. And I went, oh, bugger it. I'm just going to call it Modus um, because that'll do. Yeah, it means gives movement. you a license to – create what you want oh totally and that's what yeah. I was you know what that's what I was looking for yeah. that's the control thing again so um and and then it stuck because then I couldn't think I didn't think of anything else and I just left it and so and then I thought oh you know what I actually I don't mind it people didn't know what it was they yeah. started booking in because they didn't know what it was mm. and so essentially to give it a bit of a non-succinct title it grew organically from the fact of when I was doing Pilates classes in the morning, doing CrossFit classes in the afternoon. My body was on and prepped and prepared then when I went and did weightlifting. So I thought, oh, okay, hold on. There's something to say for this. I didn't want to teach bar. I didn't want to just do I, – I am very fussy with warm-ups. I don't believe that going for a run is a warm-up. I don't think – so I went, okay, what if I did the Pilates stuff for the warm-up and then progress that into some strength work and mm. some cardio work. So that's where it kind of all fused together, I yeah. guess, is that, yeah. So typically speaking in a class, now we change it up a little bit so the clients don't get you know bored and the variety mm. is what I took from the CrossFit stuff. But we will do Pilates components. If I'm going to do be doing a bunch of overhead or leg work, I'm going to look at, I'm going to draw from the Pilates esque and classical Pilates exercises that will be relevant. So overhead work also involves mobility of the spine. So, all right, let's get spine mobile or get it moving. Let's obviously prep the arms, um, you know, let's weight bear core definitely. And to be honest, it like you may see similar things, but we might do a little bit more of something strength work. We'll use the TRXs. I've got pull-up rigs in there. Cause I reckon everyone should be able to try and because we put pull-ups in such a far, oh, I know, horrible. I know. <laughs> and you know, things like that. And clients walk away from it going, Oh my gosh, I just did that. Yeah. Well, that's interesting yeah. too, because um, that leads on then to the mental component. Absolutely. The, yeah. The, yeah. I mean, it's it's very well scientifically documented that um, movement is good for your mental health. Yes. So have you witnessed that with your yourself, your clients? Yep, absolutely. Mm. Like, And it, I'm not, not just saying that just to answer the question, but that's where I guess one, I went into teaching for as a little side note. And two, I could do this for free not for too long because I've got to pay bills, but (laughs) I could do this for free because when the clients get it or they do their first pull up bands or no bands, doesn't matter, whatever they do a burpee, they prove it to themselves. I'm like, okay, this is what, you know, and I don't want to take, I'm not there to take the, you know, the gold trophy for that. I don't want the reward. The reward is seeing clients actually go, I can, you know, and you unlock that you unlock yeah. you know and even little things so there was a a student that I had or a client should I say back when I was before I opened the studio I was coaching um at a CrossFit uh, gym I didn't realize she suffered from anxiety um and she for her it was just being having the numbers broken down so that was a whole other element that I hadn't even thought about because I don't go through that in a Mm. workout. I just have sort of gone, okay, if I've got 50, then how am I going to count that? She needed it broken down even more. And that was a real turning point for me because I actually apply that so often because I guess CrossFit, um, 
from a a client perspective, I think people, and this is not, this is with anywhere. So it could be F45, it could be whichever. I think we'll have a certain clientele that are interested in it, that are ready for maybe taking on those big leaps and bounds. Mm. You know, the clientele that come in to me are, you know, perhaps pre and postnatal or have had injuries and it's, and they'll start in the Pilates side and then they want to try a modus class. And so you, they're not, the num doing 50 step ups is like, no, I, I can't do that. Oh, it's a pretty hard place to start. Totally. From. Yeah. Mm. And to be honest, I would probably reduce the reps, yeah. but you know, if I can see, and I, if it takes you an hour, it takes you an hour to do the 50 step ups. I want you to do that. I want you to complete that. How am I going to break it down? And I draw from that. Like, I'm not saying it's just that one experience, yeah, but, but that, that was, was a really an eye-opener for you. huge. And so now, like with, if we're talking little things, if they have, and they hate it, and it might be four minutes of burpees, or it might be 30 burpees, and you see the faces and they know, because I laugh, I, you know, I was like, guys, the more you hate it, the more it fuels me. It's fine. <laughs> How you're are we going to, cool. yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Um, do five facing that way. Now turn a little bit, do another five. Do a turn a little bit and do another five. And out of nowhere, they've done 20. Yeah. Now you've only got 10 more. And it's those things that they walk out the studio with and then they might go and do lofty or they might, so, you know, yeah. For me, that's an example of why it's important to go to a qualified trainer or something. Because if you just said to yourself, I'll do 30 burpees on my front lawn, you probably wouldn't do that. I right? wouldn't do 30 burpees on my front lawn. I need someone to tell me yeah. to do And also burpees. distract the way you've mentioned distracting people from counting how many, like yeah. turning around yeah. or whatever. Yep. And suddenly it's like, oh my gosh, I just did it. Yeah. yeah. And I like, and I, the other thing too is I wouldn't ask my guys to do anything. I say my guys, my clients mm. to do anything that I wouldn't do. Yeah. So if yeah. I set them, one of the CrossFit benchmarks I've done in the past is seven minutes of burpees. I know. I'm making a face. Don't do it. No, do it. Do it. Um, and what I've done to break that down, I then try and, I don't want to say impart the knowledge, but it's like, I've been through this. Yeah. So can I try and, you know, tell you what I've gone through and not in a motivation way of like, oh, well done. You can do it. It's like, no, that's not a, ta- I'm really big on the whys and the tangibles. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, how can we do this? And I don't know, I'm not like psychology, you know, and I'm probably maybe doing it wrong on their end. But if if it means that you walk out of here and you went, I did this, that's success to me. That's, yeah. you know, that's a win. Yeah. So do you uh, do you still teach CrossFit or? No, no. I don't. Yeah, I've got, um, I still went and did my level two, even mm-hmm. though I wasn't going to be Is teaching. Is that to help with your motors classes? And- well, actually I, it's helped. What le- What the level two did, it looked more at your teaching where you stood in the room oh okay and so teaching style and that kind of yeah a little bit now it wasn't that they were getting you to teach one way it was getting you to identify could you do that better so they they encourage teaching in a round which i've never done before Mm. because as a dancer we've always been in rows yeah and if you go do an audition and you're at the back you hope that your Chinese whispers of whatever the choreography is, and it's a it's a fight. It's bad luck if you don't get it, you know. Whereas obviously this is very different because they're paying for it. But I'd never thought about teaching in a round. Yeah. Um, I was very, very able to go up and just touch people. So they're like, okay, that's great, but you've turned your back on someone. So can you manage your observation? And I walked away. For, even though it, I didn't even relate it to CrossFit. I related it to my skills of you know. So. And a lot of people went, oh, why, you know, why would you go do your level two if you're about to open a Pilates studio? And it gave me so a whole other level of thought that I hadn't actually paid attention to. That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it doesn't mean I don't teach in the round now, but it has got me realizing where am I standing in the room. Yeah, it's made you very aware. Very aware. Yeah. Mm. More. And I I thought I was aware before, but I guess I hadn't actually sat and, yeah, thought about it. So, um, yeah, those little things. Yeah. I just want to digress a little bit because I think it's so interesting. So pretty much everything you've done has been involved with movement. But you did say before you did a makeup or a yep. diploma of specialist makeup. Yep. So so what is that? <laughs> so I didn't realise how much I actually so I'm a tomboy by the way, so makeup yeah, is me not too. yeah. I like climbing trees. Yep. Um <laughs> and I 
with the dancing side of things, I guess I was interested in maybe more, perhaps a little bit the application, you know, and the skill in that. And I, once I think I just try and relate everything to dance just because, but there was a discipline. It, there was a discipline, but a creativity at the same time. So you had structure, but you got to play. Mm. And so you had a face that you had to do. It wasn't just out of nowhere. So are you, as in a stage makeup? Like making at the a time, yes. Yeah. So if or? we go back, you know, not so much a character, but if we go back to when I started doing friends' faces for the stage, like I would, you know, sit for hours and I love putting lashes on and there was something about that that I enjoyed. And then once again, it got to my finished the dance degree and went, what am I going to do? Someone said, oh, why don't you do look at makeup? And I was like, oh, I just, once again, I just thought you learned somewhere. I don't know. Didn't realize you do a course. No, neither did I. Yeah. Yeah. And so then Media Makeup Academy is where I did mine. And the only reason why I was actually going to go try and maybe do a thing in Melbourne for a little bit with Napoleon. And then I think mum and dad went, have you actually thought about the expenses of trying to live there and do a course. And I was like, yes, that's right. I'm young. I'm still naive. And I'm, um, and then I was looking at paint as well, but I wanted to do, uh, I think at the time, I don't know if they are now, but uh, something that had a diploma or a certificate, mm. the RTO thing to it, if I wanted to do more. So, and yeah, not, I mean, certificates are neither here nor there, but I wanted to be recognized for my yeah, prior sure. learning. I then chose to do the diploma because for me, it's the length of time in study so that actually went and did all the prosthetics work or not oh, heaps right. but a little bit so you got to learn to do ball caps um to stick like noses so all like oh, if you fantastic. think um yeah. like lord of the rings or yeah. you know they are amazing mind you I, I didn't have that level but we got a really good taster of that the thing i really enjoyed the most mundane boring but was well it's not because I, I i enjoyed it but a lot of people didn't was you know when you get beards and moustaches we learned how to make those oh wow so i just sat there i'm a bit of a if you wanted me to fold pieces of paper into thirds and put them into envelopes that's my jam and they'd all be perfect yeah and i just thrive off (laughs) why i didn't go into one office i don't know but there's something about the repetitive and maybe it's dancing repetitive nature of just each and every time don't know and i just enjoyed sitting there and threading and then styling it and trimming yeah and so did all of that. There were little things that I didn't expect that I would really enjoy. But because I went and did the prosthetic stuff, my makeup got better because you learned mm. how to blend. What about something like, say someone needed a scar on their face or something? Could you do that? I'd have to practice. It's yeah. been like a really long time. It's the same as because hairstyling was part of it too. So I wouldn't put my hand up to do like hair for a wedding because I would feel like I wouldn't know I could fudge through it but yeah. I feel guilty as all hell you know <laughs> claiming um and so scars would be the same but I'm sure if I sat down and you could actually got all my it. stuff yeah, yeah. Yeah. wouldn't be lords of the ring lord of the rings <laughs> level but um or you know cinema level and i just think because that just comes down to practice and stuff yeah, you know and, and more workshops and more applicate like yeah. some of the girls in my course they you know and the stuff that they did so it's quite artistic then hugely yeah. artistic i think we forget well once again with anything there's a spectrum yes um but yeah the stuff that take away the instagram stuff um not all the Instagram stuff, you know, a lot of it use it on a pla- they use it as a platform to share. But yeah, it's not just highlighting contour, very yeah. surface stuff. I it mean, has I, a lot more. I know nothing about that stuff. You can probably tell just by looking at uh, me. I have like no makeup <laughs> for a makeup artist that had, you know, I'm I'm not a big, and maybe that's also too why I had built up a bit of a clientele at the time because I didn't do it. Uh, like I didn't cake it on. I didn't, no. you know. So it wasn't a. Yeah, and because my interest was to have them to like it, not because that's what I learned. Yeah, you know, we learned diff- seventeen or eighteen different things to do on the face before they're finished. I was like, oh my gosh, what? I you know, and so I don't, I didn't use all of those, and I probably could have, but I yeah. felt like the clients would have. Well, not all of them. Like, don't get me wrong, there were obviously there's a mix, but a lot of the say the older clientele and women didn't want that caked look. No, but so, they want, don't want to look too different. From their absolutely, day-to-day yeah, absolutely, look. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I just wanted to ask you too about your. You obviously have a lot going on. You're running your own business. You do a lot of training yourself. So, how do you strive to find balance 
Do you find balance in your daily life? I don't life know. Or... What is balance? Yeah, maybe that's the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have kids, so I think that helps yeah, that... to start. Um, so I guess I'm not pulled in one direction um, all the time. I'm, I, I know that if I don't do enough, I'm bored. Do you relax? Do you have a way of relaxing um, or do you Yeah, think- you know what relaxing I know you're going to think I'm crazy relaxing is going to CrossFit that's my switch off. Yeah, no, fair enough. Yeah. I, for me it's trail running. Yeah. I yep. mean that's what that's my switch off and that's what keeps me happy. Yep. Mm. And so and a little bit um I think it depends what I've what I'm doing at the time. So if I'm like I could happily sit and do nothing for a li- like an ideal holiday for me. Dan is going to laugh at this because his is, <laughs> his is like Maldives, chilling on the beach. I can do that for maybe two days. Gets then boring. I need to, yeah, then yeah. I need to do something. So, I mean, he's not only like – he wouldn't sit like that for 10 days. No. But if I could um, – like Kokoda, for example. So walking for that long was so good. Yeah. And I didn't wasn't interested in sitting down. You know, obviously yeah. you sit down I, I to rest. I think I'm but, like you. Yeah. I, my kids always roll their eyes because when I mention holiday, it's some kind of a, tr- <laughs> a trek or something, and they're like, "Well, can't we just go to Thailand?" Oh, and look, sit on I'm the sure beach? at that age, I would have been the same. Um, but yeah, I think there's a bit of I, I I have found my limit. When I first opened the studio, I would still be hanging around till two o'clock in the afternoon. I'd come home, I'd be rushed, and I couldn't figure out why. So it mm. has taken some time to sort of go okay if that's the time I finish with a a client or a class half an hour is like my mini goal to try and do as many things as what I can and then I just try and get out of there otherwise so I guess having some of that structure has helped I have to get to some training sessions otherwise I just get frustrated um but yeah most I don't know I I like to be busy or doing something Yeah. yeah Well, that brings me to my final question. So I like to ask all my guests, if you could recommend two things that all people could do to improve their well-being, what would they be? So I was trying to, th- I was thinking about yeah. this because, yes, I had a cheeky uh, question um, <laughs> showing, preview. preview. And I, in part, definitely, like if we're talking physical in terms of, you know, training or whatever, finding something that you actually enjoy mm. doesn't have to be cardio because at the end of the day, what's the, if your goal is to lose weight, then obviously you've got to, you know, but something that you enjoy that if you do go four or five times a week, you want to do that. Yeah, you so know, something you can be consistent Consistent at. with. And even if it's not even the same style, like if you, one of those sessions is, let's just say, for example, is Pilates, another session is yoga and you mm. have that variety, absolutely. You want to not end up in the car park going, why have I you know um book this and then the other one is I suppose on the mental side of things which I'm not trained in so this is just ages ago I was working um and Rihanna if you're out there listening to this she said to me we we're discussing about something and a quote she heard she passed on to me and people are in your life for a reason a season or a lifetime oh that's beautiful which like once again not the spirit you know I'm not overly poetic about that but when I reflect on that a lot with some things or times or whichever Mm. and people can cross categories they can sit in categories they can but someone always sits in one of those and I think the team of support around you and not and having and maybe drawing back the expectations of some people or things at certain times and maybe I've sort of settled on this a little bit because of opening the studio or certain things in in life um that I think that's important too yeah, yeah. I, the well-being and it's the people around I don't know I sort of can't articulate so it's sort of like finding your tribe Is I think so yeah I think yeah. so and having the people that you can call on when you think you need them and, and yeah. maybe knowing and and having an un, an expectation that's not that you know that they'll be there every time yeah. or and, enough or whatever and it might you'll be. be there for them yeah sort of that yeah reciprocal totally yeah, yeah. and mm. I guess, yeah, I don't, and I don't know why I thought about that for that question. Um, but I think for, if I think about for me, it's got to be physical and it's got to be mental. Yeah. And I would not be doing what I'm doing without the support network and, and on a support network. Yeah. Like the messages of going, oi, like what was that? I had um, Ellie, a girlfriend of mine, sent me a message going, take that post down. Oh, really? Yeah, like, but in a good way. She's yeah. just like, I think it misrepresented or something maybe or? i think it was uh i don't oh it was i think it was on my personal page i'm trying to remember and she just said 
remember you've got the business behind you so you can you, but it's up to you she's like you can choose to take that angle but I think you know deep down that in two weeks time if you look back at that you'll probably be mad that oh, you did post it because so it's that's up there. a good friend isn't yeah it? and I've got Honest. that yeah um Becca girlfriend of mine I remember there was times where she's like no pull your head in you know so I've got those people around me but at the same time too they'll give credit where credit's due yeah, you sure. know mum and dad my brother who's you know it's that constant not keeping me on my toes in terms of making me anxious or anything but it's like well, you know what do you do yeah you. yeah what do you, you know so I think that's really an interest in yep. what you're doing yeah and mm. if anyone tells you if you're going to go do yoga or whatever and you've got a good friend saying what would you do that for Mm. Mm. yeah (laughs) you know but then I'm an ex you know I like exercise so you know I mean I say that and I told Dan to not buy a bike but that's only because I thought he (laughs) wouldn't use it and because I wanted him to do more Pilates and not just go for a ride so I promise I can justify everything but yeah so I think yeah definitely the mental side of things and then finding something that you can stay consistent with because you should be able to be doing a degree of what you're doing when you're 80 yeah there's no reason why you can't totally agree maybe not the 46 trail run yeah but could you be doing 10 could you be walking it could you yeah just being out there so if people want to follow you or find your studio what's the best way uh so i guess on social media is probably Mm -hmm. really good so if you've got instagram it's the handle is just corpermotus so k-o-r-p-e-r-m-o-t-u-s and then on facebook um I think it's under Corpor Modus Pilates, but if you find Corpor I'll put Modus, links yep. in the show notes anyway. Yep. Um, mm. And then, yeah, that'll be the best to follow because that's sort of what I post on about. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, the rest is just if you go to the website, the website. which is yeah. – which is beautiful, by the way. Oh, thank you. I love yeah. all the colours and your logo. And yep, I really... can thank the guys at Frame Creative yeah, for that. Yeah, they've so, done a great job. Yeah, it's they lovely. sat me down. And actually, that was a really nice journey too because it they – go through a lots of different I mean I'm sure most design places are like this but you extrapolate different ideas mm. and through them through the design process you really glue down your purpose which yeah. is I didn't yeah I didn't expect that out of the yeah, design purpose but obviously really it reads yeah yeah on the no, website. I love it yeah. it's beautiful yeah. so I'll put a link to that obviously awesome so, thank you um thank you very much no for coming thank on you today. yeah it's been a pleasure to I hope I've made sense you, you have <laughs> yeah. And that was the lovely Mel Anderson of Corpomotus Pilates Studio. So you can subscribe to Amanda's Wellbeing Podcast on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button and while you're there, click on the bell to be alerted when new episodes are available. You can also subscribe on your favourite podcast app, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, Spotify or Google Podcasts. And you can follow the podcast on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Direct links to all social media can be found on the subscribe page of my website at www.amandaswellbeingpodcast.com. If you would like to contact me, you can send a message by the contacts page on my website. Please feel free to suggest topics you'd like to learn more about and people you'd like to hear interviewed, and I'll do my best to deliver that to you. Producing the podcast is a labour of love. We put in a lot of time, money and effort behind the scenes. So if you enjoy Amanda's Wellbeing Podcast and would like to make a contribution via Patreon, or PayPal or by Amazon to help ensure we continue to provide you with excellent content, please visit the Contribute page on my website. Finally, please take a minute to leave a rating on iTunes. It improves visibility and will help me source excellent guests. Thank you for tuning in. Eat well, move well, think well.